how do I approach patients? Well, I'm very honest with them, very direct. I tell them this is a new drug. Uh, whether it works or doesn't work, we don't know. But in my experience, it seems to work better than not giving the drug. It is beyond expectations. Most important to me, I tell them, I have not seen any complication. Perhaps the only one is some feeling of nausea when they find out the cost of the drug. That's the only thing. There's no other, not even nausea, not even void, not, nothing at all. So for this audience, we say we need a good randomized controlled trial before we can say, yes, it works. Now I'm going to give two case reports which I think has a, of interest. The case one is a brain hemorrhage with brain infarction from a ruptured aneurysm and hepatitis brain hemorrhage. Now, I just want to say that for the neurosurgeons over here, uh, I can be criticised for this management, but nevertheless, I'm going ahead. Now, this was a sailor, uh, a naval officer who is uh, 64 years old, hypertensive, Caucasian male, very heavy smoker, and he presented with transient numbness of the right leg. And rightly so, the refer referring doctor gave him aspirin with a diagnosis of TIA. I think there's nothing to to, to, to sort of criticize on that. I think he did the right thing. And when I saw him, he was clinically intact, but he has headaches. My feeling at that point was maybe he had a stroke, a stroke out in addition to TIA. To my surprise, a CT scan shows this, a large L left MC myification aneurysm with bleed and an unruptured right side, which we found on the angiogram. This is a picture of that the CT scan showed, aneurysm, the bleed, aneurysm, the bleed. So in a way, I was a bit of a dilemma. I could do the so-called proper way, bypass proximal occlusion, but for the surgeons around, you know there are problems. To bypass, you need heparin, you need a long procedure. You, you, you disturb the, 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 the arteries and you might blow the aneurysm. There's aspirin being given. Or I made a decision to operate as urgent as possible with a very conservative clipping. In other words, this is, the artist was very kind to me. The clip wasn't so nice and clipped. The clip was actually across the upper half of the aneurysm. I thought it was completely clear. The bifurcation is perfectly uh, good. The brain looks pulsating very well. A lot, a lot of uh, uh, blood, blood, you can see on the blood vessels. And I was quite happy with that. Unfortunately, post-op, initially, immediately after surgery, he was moving his right arm. It became weaker and weaker. I knew something had happened. Did an urgent CT scan. Infarction. Angiogram. We found a retrograde thrombosis. MC from clip backwards to carotid bifurcation. Immediate special taken the usual thing for neurosurgeons and neurologists, many tall and blah blah the usual. But in addition, I started on a neuro aid. They continued to deteriorate. Repeated CT scan, brain swelling and went in for a surgical brain decompression. That was a turning point. He improved after that, but he was found to have a global aphasia. Started speech therapy. With time, he continued improvement, he regained understanding of speech, and subsequently he could say two words, oh yeah. Now, when the accompanying doctor sent him back to England for the rehab, he came back to me and said, you know, Dr. Lee, do you know why the patient keeps saying, oh yeah? Because everybody in that community says, oh yeah. So that was inside his brain since he was young. Now, it's not the end of his problems. He developed D DVT, pulmonary embolism, in spite of being on fraxiparin. He started on warfarin, and we subsequently found that there was blood picture coagulation problems. After the PE, he had poor lung reserve. After a harrowing time, he finally improved, and he did a cranioplasty. So the advantage is that we have this with he with us for three months where we could see the progress. And when he left, he was conscious and rational. Right arm power increased to three plus. Right leg power, grade two. He had full understanding of speech. He was able to express most words with prompting. And occasionally, he can speak in full sentences. Now, I would say this is, to my mind, in all my years, with the MCA infarct, with Boca's area all destroyed and all that, I think this is unique. That's my personal opinion. Now, the second case was 72-year-old Chinese Singaporean hypertensive male. 
He had two previous strokes, 94, 98, where's where I got the picture because I was covering the private hospital, the public hospital at the time. Did a bladder EVD for him. And finally he recovered with 90% mobility and third speech and mild anomia. And I was just following up on it off once or twice a year, catch up with him. And on July the 5th, he suddenly collapsed. He was admitted to a public hospital in Singapore. These are according to the relatives. He was conscious initially, mild right sided paralysis, continued to deteriorate to zero, and slowly became unresponsive to the environment with only occasional eye opening. And the scan shows a 5 cm diameter hemorrhage in the left brain external capsule region. And this is a picture. I call it external capsular to be kind, in the sense that I wouldn't say kind. I could always say that the internal capsule is involved, which will sort of glorify neurate a little bit, but I prefer to under express. So I will say this external capsular clot, and we all know the results are always better with external capsular clot, number one. And number two, uh, recovery in all strokes is not a progressive stroke, but it's always stepwise. You can see from here, you can always argue that internal capsule is also involved. So, no surgery was done in, in the hospital. Two weeks later, he had spontaneous eye opening, but he was really like semi vegetative. Five weeks later, he was admitted to the rehab center, which also included acupuncture. And six weeks after the stroke, the family called me. He was bedridden with tube feeding, no response to the environment, communication with anybody. Six and a half weeks later, I told them about neuro aid. They didn't believe me. They went to the internet, they checked it out, said, got back very excited. Yes, doctor, we want to try this. Fine. So we started on neuro aid six and a half weeks later. And according to them, there's very noticeable improvement within one week of commencing neuro aid. In fact, on day two after starting treatment, his conscious level improved and he started to move and look around the scenery. He started to vocalize and shout in Chinese Hokkien pain during physiotherapy. There was more connection to the environment. He was more purposeful gestures with the arms. And he was noted to acknowledge with his head and eyes, relatives, friends, and a visiting mom. I reviewed him a week after neurate treatment at the center. And this is my own clinical judgment. He could recognize me, eye recognition, and he actively obeys commands by holding his left arm, gripping my hand, and when I asked him to release, he released. So I knew he communicated. One and a half weeks after neurate treatment, the right arm was noted by the family to be getting stronger. The patient started to smile. Two and a half weeks later, he could sit firmly in a wheelchair. And six weeks after neuro aid treatment, which is about a week ago, he was conscious and rational, could vocalize appropriate monosyllables, could sit up in a chair for four hours, and stand up at five minutes with support. So, what's my perspective and what's my conclusion? I, we, I, I and we, those in Singapore, we feel that the clinical recovery is better with neuro aid. We will actively recommend it if patients can afford it, but we are always very direct and very honest that it is the early stages. And we talk about neuroplasticity and neuroprotection. We expect larger trials, and it's also being considered for dementia. This is one of my, my sort of uh, requests to Moliak, because plasticity can be good for anything, maybe even Parkinsonism. So before I end, I just want to say that right now, what I'm doing now is, for want a better word, the Chinese, we are selling Koyo, Chinese medical plaster. Uh, it's, I've never given a talk like this before in my life, but I think we are all excited because for the first time since I started medicine, we have something for stroke, possibly something for stroke. As a student, I was very shocked when I went to emergency, followed the Houseman medical officers around. A stroke came in. They put him at a corner. I said, why? You study what you do, they tell me. So since Neuro8 was founded, I think we have hope. Thank you.